welcome back so in last lecture we will discuss about the basic concepts of various layers so in this we will discuss in detail about each and every layer so let us start with physical layer so in general the physical layer will transmit the rabbits through the communication channel in between or whatever the sender we have so receiver we have in between sender and receiver through the communication channel it will transmit the rabbits that means when the physical medium is co connected with two ends we may have several components of mechanical electrical as well as some network interface specifications and the physical transmission of bit streams over the transmission medium connecting two pieces of communication equipment so in sim simple terms the the physical layer decides the following how many number of pins and how many fu functions uh, which are assigned for each and every pin of the network connector which will be de uh, dealing with mechanical and signal level data rate which may be deals with electrical and whether we are transmitting the data in both the directions or in any one direction that is in duplex format simplex format full duplex method in which format we are transmitting the data at the same time when the connection was when the connection we are establishing at the same time when we are disconnecting that is establishing and breaking the connection deals with the physical transmission as we said in the previous class previous lecture every device the hardware device which will be used for network that may be standardized according to some specifications so there exist a variety of physical protocols such as rs232 c and rs449 standards developed by electronics industries association and the components which if you consider for uh, the physical layer cabling system components which which will be handled by the physical layer at the same time adapters that will be connected to the physical media and pin assignment if we have a connector with specific number of pins then they need to assign one each and every specific task for individual pin if we have a pin connector each pin will do one specific task like that so hub repeater and patch panel specifications then wireless system components and small computer system interfaces network interface card so all these has to be done by the physical layer so if we consider the another layer called data link layer so the goal of the data link layer is to provide reliable efficient communication between adjacent machines connected by the communication channel specifically a group of physical layer bit streams into units called frames in general we can call the frames here in the case of data link layer uh, otherwise we can we would call it as packets the difference between packets and frames are the packets are of size pixel size but the frames are the variable size so based on our requirement the size of the frame may be uh, decided so in general for data link layer we use the term called frame when the data link layer will add or will calculate the checksum not only checksum we have say various methods are there that is they are they, they may use parity check or two way parity check or checksum and at the same time they may also use cyclic redundancy check and md5 these are the five various methods to calculate uh, whether the data is reaching safely or not for that whether this layer is responsible for calculating this and when the sender add some quantity or some uh, stream of bits for the data along with the data it the stream of bits will be transmitted to the receiver then receiver again it will check whether the transmitted bits are reached safely or not for that 
they are using various methods we will discuss now just uh, within a while we will discuss all these various methods then at the same time data link ray is also responsible for error control which will return positive or negative acknowledgements to the sender that means when the data is reached safely it will receive it will send the positive acknowledgement if the data is not reached safely it will receive uh, it will uh, sorry it will send the negative acknowledgement so when flow control is also one of the major issue for example if sender is sending the data in very fast manner the receiver receiver is not that much that not that much faster to receive the data so in that case it has to some imbalance if suppose if sender sends 100 mb of data per second and receiver is capable of handling only 50 mb of data then sender is sending 100 mb per every second receiver is receiving only 50 mb per every second what about 50 remaining 50 so these remaining 50 are going to lose to overcome this problem so whatever the services provided by the data link layer that has to be transmitted to the network layer so the network layer wants to able to send the packets to its neighbors without worrying about the details of getting there in one place so it doesn't check uh, what the data type is the same time in uh, it is also you can uh, call the layer 2 of uh, osi model which will provide the following functions allows a device to access the network to send and receive the messages offers the physical address so a device data can send on the network works with device networking software when sending and receiving messages at the same time it is having the capability of error detection as we said earlier the last two layers physical and data link layer is handling with both software as well as hardware components so the common networking components that function layer 2 uh, includes NICs, network interface cards, Ethernet and token ring switches, bridges. So if you consider the data link layer functionality one by one, reliable delivery. So if when the sender data link layer from the sender system will deliver the set of uh, frames to the receiver, but reliable delivery in the sense it has to check whether all the frames are reached in the order which is transmitted by the sender or not so this when the sender initiate the sending process the connection state keeps track of sending order and which frames require retransmission that means the retransmission frames are decided if the corresponding frame was not reached to the destination so if it is not reached or if it is wrongly reached, corrupted data it is receiving, then the receiver sends negative acknowledgement so that the from the sender again it has to retransmit the corresponding frame. So, example receiver state includes which frames have been received and which one have not. Best effort in the sense if suppose sender sends a frame, receiver receives a frame. So if it receives correctly, then it has to send positive acknowledgement. Let us assume that the data is reached safely. So sender, the receiver sends uh, the positive acknowledgement, but the receiver does not reach that positive acknowledgement. In that case, in view of the sender, it decides the packet was may not be decided, may not be reached to the destination. So in such cases, when higher level can recover from errors with little loss in performance that is when errors are so infrequent then there is to be gained by the data link layer performing the recovery it is as just easy to have higher layers deal with occasional loss of packet 
for real time applications requiring better never than late semantics old data may be worse than no data acknowledge delivery so when any receiver returns an acknowledgement frame to the sender indicating whether the data is reached properly or not okay if suppose this sits whatever the acknowledgement sits in the model other than the sender keeps the connection state but may not be necessarily retransmit the unacknowledged frames so in the same way the receiver may hand over the received packets to higher layer in order in which they arrive regardless of the original sending order simply it will receives every packet which it receives it doesn't bother about the order in which the sender sends why because every frame is having its own identification number in that case once randomly the packet, the frames are received by the receiver then it will the receiver has to arrange in appropriate order so for that to arrange the frames in appropriate order each frame should have one identity number that is called unique sequence number so which the receiver returns in an acknowledgement frame to indicate that frame which frame the ic query refers to which frame is received which frame is not received so that the sender can know framing so dll transmit the physical layers rabbit streams into discrete units called uh, frames how can the receiver detect frame boundaries various techniques used for this length count bit stuffing character stuffing so length count in the sense when the data is transmitting by the sender it will simply count how many bits are there so that count will be added at the end of the bit stream then that will be transmitted to the receiver so when the receiver receives the uh, data it again it will count if count is matching then it will send positive acknowledgement if it is not matching then it will simply sends negative acknowledgement bit stuffing in the sense instead of having the count if any bit was modified then also the count becomes same so that's why to overcome the problem uh, we may have another method called bit stuffing in this to terminate just like when you are writing the programming language let us assume we have writing a program in c the string may be terminated by the null character so when string means of any size there is no fixed size here so it will access the first character second character third character and so on until it reaches to null character in the same way when the bits of strings are sending to the uh, receiver we may add one ascii character uh, one uh, bit to represent end of that so that that is a uh, another way and character stuffing in the sense instead of having one single bit we may terminate that particular frame or stream of bits with character stuffing for example so if we have 1 1 1 1, 1 like that five ones are there in a in a uh, binary data so in that is if suppose five consequently ones consequently ones are there then i am adding another zero after five ones that was the case when five ones are there we will add one more uh, zero bit at the end like that the based on the based on the requirement uh, the variable size frames may be decided by the data link layer error control so in general when the data is transmitting and randomly the frames are delivered to the destination so to achieve this we need to have acknowledgements timers and sequence numbers are required when the frame was reached to the destination it has to acknowledge and it has to decide the timer and along with the sequence number flow control another uh, design issue so it deals with speed of the sender to match that the speed of the receiver so usually 
This is a dynamic process as the receiving speed depends on such changing factors as the load availability of buffer space. So in some cases, data link layer service must be opened before use. So the data link layer uses open operations for allocating the buffer space control blocks agreeing on the maximum message size. Synchronize, initialize, send and receive sequence numbers with its speeds at other end of the communication channel. When we come to error correction as well as detection mechanisms, th this is a major responsibility of the data link layer. When the data is transmitted, we may have frequent errors due to the noise uh, at the same time attenuation. So, in general, the errors may not occur for single bit. The errors may occur in a bulk of a uh, set of bits where that uh, bits was affected. That we can say that that set of bits may not be reached safely to the destination. So that data link layer may check or may detect errors at the same time correct the errors. If any error is found, it will, the errors has to be corrected, which was sending along with the data. So in general, there are two types of attacks against errors. One is called error detecting codes and error correcting codes. As we said in the previous uh, lecture, there are five mechanisms are there to check as well as to correct. You can call parity, simple parity or two-way parity, checksum, cyclic redundancy check and MD5. These are the various examples of the correcting codes and detecting codes. Let us have some look about correcting as well as detecting mechanisms. When the data is transmitted, it may be scrambled by noise or data may be corrupted. So to avoid this, the data link layer has to detect the error as well as the correct error. So the basic approach used for error detection is to use the redundancy bits where additional bits are added to facilitate the detection of errors. Some popular techniques for error detection are, these are the five we have. So if you consider simple parity check, very simple it is. It will count how many ones are there in the data. If number of ones are odd, then simply add one. If number of ones are even, simply add zero. Okay. So based on number of ones we have in the data, if it is odd, simply add one. If it is even, simply add uh, zero at the end of that particular data. So let us have see this is a sender, this is a receiver. Sender will sending the data. How many ones are there? One, two, three. Three ones are there. Simply it will add one at the end of the data. The along with this bit, the data is transmitted to the uh, through the communication medium to the receiver. Receiver will receive this data and again it will check if it is even reject the data, if it is even, uh, accept the data, if it is or reject the data. That is, it will count how many ones are there, then it will check. So let us have two-way parity bit, two-way parity check. So in this, let us assume we have this data. This data is arranged in rows and columns. In row wise, we need to check how many number of ones are there. Here, see, in the first bit, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, like that we have four set of uh, streams of bits are there. So in the first stream, it will count how many ones are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, that is even number will, be, will add 0. And for this 1, 2, 3, 4, even number add 0. 
one two even number add zero one two even number add zero then row wise finished then column wise so one 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 three ones are there odd number one only one 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 two ones zero one one zero like that and for this also check row wise we may get one two three four five six even number we replace zero now for this data for this bits we may add the zero at the end here so that it becomes one zero zero one one zero zero one zero likewise one two three four five streams are added here one two three four five so these will be transmitted to the receiver the receiver again it will arrange all these bits in this like this format it will divide the last row and last column they will remove that so that it will get the original data check some if we consider here four sets of bits are there 1 2 3 4 5 and i am taking the first set of bits and i am taking the second set of bits simple i'll perform the binary addition so in this case first the data is divided into k segments of exercise then it will add all the individual segments at last it will do the ones complement that will be transmitted to the receiver then data will be transmitted to the receiver then again it will at the receiver side it will perform the same thing at last it will do the complement then if we get all zeros it will accept the data if we are not getting all zeros it will reject the data let us assume this first two bits i am taking i am performing binary addition 1 plus 0 1 0 plus 1 1 0 plus 0 0 1 plus 0 1 1 plus 0 1 0 plus 1 1 0 plus 1 1 1 plus 0 0 and 1 here number of bits are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 but we should have only 8 bits so i am carrying forwarding 1 to here again i will perform the addition so once it was finished i will take this next bit 001000 like this i will perform addition again i will count number of bits are 8 more than 8 so i will carry one again add so at last by adding these four we may get this one 0010101 for this perform once complement so replace 0 with 1 1 with 0 we'll get this so if along with this data i am sending this once complement value also so receiver side will perform the same thing once it was added will have the complement value will equal to 0 So we'll add four, and apart from this, this transmitted bits also we are adding. So at last, the complement value becomes zero. Then, if it is all zeros, we may accept the data. If it is or not all zeros, then we reject the data. This is a flowchart for uh, saying CRC. Then, another method we have is called cyclic redundancy check. If we have the message like this. Here, in checksum, we do addition, binary addition. In CRC, we, we we need to do the binary division. So this is the original message. I want to send some some sort of parity bits to the receiver for checking. So here I am considering one polynomial x power three plus one. We you may choose any one any polynomial, not the same. So x power three plus one of order degree three. Then here I am writing like this: one x power three. There is no x power two, so I am writing zero x power two. There is no x power one, zero x power one, and one into x power zero. Three order three two one and zero. Here from this we may get one zero zero one as the generator. So if it is four bit. If it is four bit, we need to add three zeros at the end of the data. If we have five bit, add four zeros. Like in general, 
if you have n bit then n minus 1 zeros are added to the original message so for my original message i added three zeros i'll perform one zero, division by 1001 so we make it at last the remainder is 011 so for this data i'm adding 011 and this will be transmitted to the receiver once it was received by the receiver again for this number not on the original data whatever the data we transmitted that on the data it will perform the division by 1001 at last we will get the remainder 0 if remainder is 0 then the data will be accepted if remainder is not 0 data will be rejected so next network layer so the basic purpose of network layer is to provide end-to-end -to -end communication capability in contracts to mission mission communication provided by data link layer so end-to-end -end is performed using two basic approaches known as connection oriented as well as connectionless services so here majorly four issues are considered by the network layer interface between the host and the network then routing congestion and deadlock internet working these four we'll discuss now there are two basic approaches used for sending the packets which is a group of bits that includes data plus source and destination addresses from node to node called virtual circuit and datagram method Okay. So these are all also referred to as connection oriented as well as connectionless network layer services. That is in virtual circuit approach uh, which consisting of logical connection is first established between two users. During this establishment phase, when the connection was is to be established, the two users and two users not only agree to set up the connection between them, but also decide upon the quality of services to be associated with them. So th this is a virtual uh, protocol, CCITT X25 specification. So when the Datagram is a self-contained message unit which contains sufficient information for routing from the source node to the destination node without depending on the previous message interchanges between them. In contrast to the virtual circuit method where the fixed path is explicitly set up before message transmission, sequentially transmitted messages can flow completely in different paths. So the datagram method is analogous to the postal system and virtual circuit method is analogous to the telephone system, just like example. Other network uh, layer issues we have. So it is responsible for routing packets from source to destination. Routing is also done by this. And the algorithms in general, we have two types of algorithms are there. One is static and second one is dynamic or simply we can call it as adaptive and non-adaptive. So based on these algorithms, uh, based on these algorithms will decide uh, how in which way the uh, frames or packets are transmitting to the destination. So for, for connectionless networks, the routing decision is made for each diagram, connection oriented network, it will decide once and it will use the same connection till the end. Next routing issues. So the algorithm must deal with the following issues, correctness and simplicity, stability, fairness and optimality. So in general, when we consider one network, in that particular network, one, de one device may, getting fa may got failed or some part of the network may be failed 
but the complete network will not never fail at once so when a particular part or particular node is failed to transmit due to various reasons then it has to search for the alternate route to transmit to the to reach the destination stability event the, the same if any link fails how much time elapses before the remaining routers recognize the topology change if anyone is uh, failed any link is failed the other nodes has to know this particular link was failed so that it has to search for the other nodes fairness and optimality you can have a uh, exact transmission as well as optimal transmission so as we know we have two types of networks are there one is called packet switching and second one is circuit switching so when the packet switching network uh, using the common procedure to transmit the data from uh, sender to receiver it also deals with congestion the network layer also uh, have responsible to perform these issues when more packets are enter into common area so ultimately it may cause the delay so if the situation continues the subnet may have no alternative but to discard the packets if delay increases the sender may incorrectly retransmit making bad situation even worse so so that overall performance will be degraded okay. so when multiple packets are entered to uh, through the same uh, router then we need to have the router have a capability to uh, exchange the information with the appropriate or with exact destination so another issue in uh, networking is internetworking as we know in globe we have various categories of networks are there if let us assume there are three cases source and destinations are in the same network source and destinations are in the different networks but they are same they are uh, same type of networks source and destination in two different networks and two different two networks are of different category in this case conversions as well as deconversions are more so when connecting different networks technologies together one find the same problems packet may travel through many different networks each network may have different frame format that that's why i'm saying two different networks two different architectures two category of networks some networks may be connectionless and some are connection oriented so when this information is transmitting one category of network to another category of network we need to have one interface called gateway when the data is transmitting exiting from this network it has to be converted into appropriate format so that my data is transmitted transmitting through this physical communication channel when it is entered into the gateway again it has to convert exited from the gateway it has to convert again come entered into network 3 this may have different frame format again it has to convert like that till to reach the destination there are so many encryptions as well as decryptions are there next another issue called routing so when routing means when we are sending the packet or frame in which route uh, we are using to reach that particular destination so as i said now to find the path or to find the route we have two algorithms called adaptive as well as non adaptive algorithms so just like non adaptive means static before transmitting the packet only it will find all the necessary information that is where is the destination how many intermediate nodes are there how many packets we have to transmit how many routes are there like that it will maintain one routing table at each and every node 
when the data is before uh, transmitting itself as we know in a network in, in especially in the case of wireless network the network may be upgraded or updated in regular intervals let us assume that the network is for example the network is updated or communicating with its neighboring nodes for every 5 minutes let us assume that means when the first time the network is updated it will coordinate or it will communicate with all neighboring nodes okay if we have how many nodes are there for a single node how many nodes are there it has to communicate with all the neighboring nodes that means when it is refreshed it will send the data which is having with that particular node that will be transmitted to its neighboring node the same case will be happened for all the nodes so when it is second time refreshed again it has to send like that it will it continues like it will continues at one particular point of time every node is having remaining all node information for example if you have 50 nodes at some particular number of uh, refreshments after some refreshments at some particular point of time the first node is having remaining 49 node information second node is having remaining 49 information like that every node is having the remaining all nodes information so this will become this will become a major problem so that why because the when these routing tables are exchanged between the nodes it may take it may consume more bandwidth so the bandwidth we have whatever the bandwidth we have most of the bandwidth is used to exchanging the information like routing tables between the nodes so another is called adaptive called we can call dynamic it does not maintain any information uh, prior to transmission when we need when when there is a demand at the time only it will find the route so another layer called transport layer so the functions offered by transport layer which includes application identification client side identity identification and it will confirm that an entire the a complete message arrived or not segmentation control of data and flow control establishment maintenance and virtual circuits error detection realignment of segmented data in correct order multiplexing or sharing of multiple sessions over the physical link these are the major functions done by the transport layer and it also provides end to end communication between the processes executing on different machines that means just like it will provide the services by the transport protocol are similar to those provided by the data link protocol so there are several important differences between transport and the lower levels just like user oriented negotiation of quality and type of services guarantee service and addressing at the same time uh we have uh, two solutions to overcome these problems so user oriented means application programs interact directly with the transport layer and from the programmer's perspective the transport layer is a network thus the transport layer should be oriented more towards user services than simply reflect what the underlying layers have to provide so then type of what type of uh, it has to decide what type of service you are going to provide and what quality you are going to provide so as i said now there are two solutions that is use well known addresses that uh, really on really if ever change allowing programs wide in addresses for what types of services does this work while this work uh for services that are well established that is mail as well as telnet 
like this it does not allow the users to easily experiment with new services so it will use the name server servers register server services uh, or the servers register services with name server with client contact to find transport addresses of a given service then so in both cases we need a mechanism for mapping high level services service names into low level encoding that can be used within a packet header for the network protocols in its general form the problem is quite complex one simplification is to break the problem into two parts have transport addresses to be a combination of machine addresses and the local process on that machine it also deals with storage capacity of that particular subnet how how many nodes are there and what is the storage capacity of that particular subnet and as we know it deals with dynamic flow control mechanism and at the transport layer end to end retransmissions are needed which wastes resources by sending the same packet over the same links multiple times if the receiver has no buffer space the sender should be prevented from sending the data that means when the sender sends the data the receiver receives it will send the acknowledgement the receiver sends the acknowledgement but the sender is not receiving the acknowledgement what it will do it, it feels that it may not be received by the uh, receiver so it will retransmit again for that we need to have some buffer space in the receiver side if buffer space is not there simply it will discard then maybe like connection establishment connection oriented connectionless flow control error control all these are handled by this way. there are some differences between connection oriented as well as connectionless so it will maintain state information about uh, every connection whereas in the case of connectionless it it doesn't maintain any information regarding the connection so allocate resources to connection set switches and here there is no resource allocation in the case of connection oriented there is a admission control mechanism but here there is no admission control mechanism pre connection routing there is no uh, pre connection routing but it will handle per packet routing reliable and in delivery robust but out of order so like some examples session layer so this functionality includes virtual connection between application entities synchronization of data flow creation of dialog units connection parameter uh, negotiations partitioning of services into functional groups acknowledgments of data receiving the during the session retransmission of data if it is not received by a device so this layer allows user on different uh, machines to establish session between them establishing using and termination so some of the sessions related services are the management control token management synchronization and uh, it is also responsible for uh, some security issues so if you come for presentation layer so mainly it will deals with the format that is called syntax and semantics of the information which is going to be transmitted from uh, sender to receiver so a few services at present it provides encoding the data and it manages abstract data structures and converts from representation used inside the computer network standard representation and back so this 
may layer also perform the functions like encryption and decryption, compression and expansion, graphics formatting, content translation, system specific translation. So next we have one layer called application layer. So application layer consisting of what most users think of as programs. It will deal with the facilities provided or required for the application. Based on the category of application, it will provide the different services. So it is the defined standard for we, we may have various protocols FTP, Telnet, SMTP, NNTP, HTTP like protocols we have. It also supports for file transfers, ability to print on the network, electronic mail, electronic messages, browsing the world wide web and uh, some other issues. These are the overall uh, overview of the various layers in in, we have in OSI. And let us have some comparison of this OSI as well as TCP. So in OSI, we have uh, seven layers. Top three are application layers and remaining are data flow layers. And here, if you consider this OSI uh, along with TCP, top three layers are combined into one layer called application layer. Transport layer is kept as it is. Network, same data and physical layer will be kept as network layer. So in some here, as we said now, these layers may be varied from one architecture to another architecture. Some may have more layers, some may have less layers. And in this case, some researchers may combine the uh, transport and network together or network and data link together based on the our requirement there is no mandatory of fixing all these layers into this so basically we have some devices on which layer these devices will be operated so hub will be operated in physical layer switch will be operated at uh, handled data link layer bridge and network interface cards access points and all these are operated in data link layer router is operating at network layer so if you consider layer 8 9 and 10 but these are not officially parts of uh, osi layer but based as i said now based on our requirement we may have layer 8 layer 9 layer 10 so these are non technical aspects of computer networking in general, layer 8 usually considered as office politics layer. That is, in most organizations, there is at least one group who is favored by the management and receives special treatment. When it comes to networking, this means that this group always has the at least or fastest equipment and highest speed network links. So in that case, we may use this layer 8. Layer 9 is generally referred as blinders layer. So this layer applies to organizational managers who have already decided usually with little or no current information and to dictate previously successful network plan. They may say things such as it worked in my last company so we will use it here. Everybody says this is the right solution. I read an airline magazine that this was the best way to do so that it what we will do. So layer 10, this is especially when uh, users have computers at home and have decided to help the network administrator or managers by making changes to the network without consulting the networking staff. Equally challenging is the user who didn't do anything when the network segment in uh, his immediate vicinity. 
suddenly dropped working in these cases late in identification with uh, late in troubles some examples how http work so it will uh, set up the connection when the request is made so generally it carries a domain name servers or the domain name service to find the ip address when we give the http the when we give the address http is responsible for finding uh, like hypertext transfer protocol whatever the hypertext we are giving that will be transmitted by this protocol so this is the message content so when we browse this content will be added the same way client server interaction we have it will provide the connection between uh, client and server and then dns query what event and what is the message content we have and uh, client and servers in between client and servers how it will be reached thank you